Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be trying to get the truck starting again, the old Ranchero. Uh, we've already changed the starting relay, uh, that didn't make any difference at all. So today I'm going to take the existing starting motor out, put a replacement one in. So, we've changed the starter relay for a new one. I tried starting the truck and it still wouldn't start, I was just getting a click. I checked the battery, it was a little bit low on power. So, charged the battery up overnight, had another go at it, and it's still just clicking when I turn the ignition on. Tested the power from the battery. The battery has plenty of power in it now. There's power getting from the battery, a full 12 volts getting from the battery to the starting relay. And there's a full 12 volts getting from the starting relay down to the starter. And all the earths are clean, good, and tight. So, the points, the problem must, I suppose, point to the starter motor. So, we removed the starter motor. So. Here we are, under the truck. Now, I would have loved to have filmed taking the starter motor out, but unfortunately, um, I don't have a lift or any form of high lifting capability for the car. So it's on axle stands at the minute, so it's a bit cramped under here. But what I can show you is this here is the starter motor. And that's the bell housing that it bolts into. So hopefully you'll be able to see this, but there's a bolt there and there's another bolt directly opposite that up here at the top. So it's just literally take those two bolts out and then there's a wire connected to it just up here. That I don't know if you can, if you can see just there is where the earth wire connects to it. Uh, sorry, where the live cable connects to it. Um, obviously it's earthed through the engine and the bell housing. Literally all you do, unbolt that cable, take these two bolts out, pull the starting motor back, and then it drops down between this gap that it's sitting in there. So that's what we did with that. Hopefully that's uh, a little bit explained for you as to how a starting motor comes out if you've never done one before. So this is the starting motor then, and it was just getting a click. Um, I took it off, as soon as I took it off the truck, obviously, I put the uh, the jump leads on, even though it was fairly obvious that there was an issue, I put the jump leads on to see if it was working, and just connected it directly to the battery. And although it does spin over, the problem seems to be that that has a mind of its own. You can see that there. It shouldn't be doing that. So that there is definitely the problem with the starter. We've rebuilt the starter motor, it's now back in the car. I didn't film putting it in the car because there's literally no space under there for me, let alone a camera and a light as well. But it's back in, battery's connected up. I'm going to see if it starts. Okay then, so the problem we're having was that the, uh, the car wouldn't start. Now it sounded as though um, it was a problem with the starter motor. Uh, or possibly the um, the starter relay. Now as you've seen already we replaced the starter motor and then I also replaced as you'll have seen if you watch the previous videos this the uh, the starter relay. So I replaced the starter relay, wired it all up the way it was and I was still just getting just a click when uh, when the key was turned. Now if you're not used to having a starting relay or a starting solenoid up here on the inner wing of the car or anywhere else in the engine bay um, you've probably got a car that's not as old as this. Modern starter motors have the starting solenoid or relay actually mounted to the top of the starter motor, which is down there, way down buried at the bottom of the engine there. So on cars of this age, the don't, the starting relay is separate. Now, found the short circuit, it was actually, it's been like that since I bought the vehicle, which leads me to be slightly confused as to how it was working properly to start with, and then all of a sudden just died and, and didn't want to work anymore. But um, what was what happens is this red wire here, it's uh, it's just down there. It goes from the positive battery terminal to this side of the starting solenoid, and then there's another wire, this one here, that comes off the other side of the start of the solenoid and goes down to the starting motor. Now there also needs to be an earth wire because everything has to be earthed. So this one, the negative side of the battery terminal, on the blue wire on this one is uh, just down on the other side of the alternator there 
and for the moment I've just got it bolted into the alternator um, bracket to hold it in place and give it a bit of an earth because I was just seeing if it would work. Now I may leave that there because it's working perfectly uh, where it is or I may move it and put it somewhere else. But I also added in another earth which comes from underneath the engine. Now down at the bottom there, I don't know if you can see it all the way down there, just where my finger's pointing, there is a smog pump. Now behind that smog pump there's a, an earth bolt on the side of the engine block. So I attached a lead namely this one here so I took that lead from the bolt on the engine block straight across to if I can get you in the right angle to see it straight across to here so it's connected there on a nice clean earth now originally when I first got the truck and when I was first driving around in it which is a bit worrying that earth cable that came from the bolt on the bottom of the engine block came straight up the side and connect it on to this side of the starting solenoid which was wrong way of doing it now as I say it did run for about two or three months when I first got the truck and then all of a sudden it, it stalled one afternoon it just wouldn't have it it just wouldn't restart so I got a wiring loom from uh, from online and I just found a, a simple basic wiring loom as to how things will be are meant to be wired up and, uh, and I just followed that uh, I'll leave a link, by the way, to that wiring diagram. I may even put it in the video after this uh, this clip of talking, so you can have a, a look at that one. Now, mine, my start and solenoid is wired up slightly differently. On the wiring diagram that I got, there should be one wire coming off this, um, going to the ignition, and one wire coming off this, going to the positive side of the coil. However, I have two wires coming off this. So one wire goes to the ignition, one wire goes to the uh, the positive side of the coil. So we're okay with those, that's absolutely fine. All this solenoid is, and all any solenoid on the top of any other starter motor is on more modern vehicles, is a switch. That's all it is, it's exactly the same as turning a light on in the house. There's power constantly, once the battery's connected, there's constant power running from the battery to this side of the switch, but nothing actually happening on the vehicle with regards to starting it because you haven't put the key in the ignition. Once you put the key in the ignition, this is energised and the switch closes, which allows this the power from the battery to go through here, straight down the starter motor, turns the starter motor over, turns the, the engine over, starts the engine, then the starter motor stops and, uh, and the engine continues running. So all this is, is basically just a switch. So what I'll do is I'll jump in and uh, connect the battery rather, jump in and then uh, we'll let you see how it starts, how easy it starts now and how it's running. So let me just get this battery clamp on here. There we are, here on the car. Now I've got the key in the ignition and uh, we're just gonna see if I can get you in a position so you can see where I am when I'm trying to start it. And there we are, easy as that. idling a little bit low, holding the rev count then, it's ticking over at around about 6 to 6.50 revs, and it's been an automatic, it should be a little bit higher than that, it should be around about 8 to 8.50 revs, but we'll, uh, we can always get that sorted out later, but you can see everything's running nicely, and of course the good news is, there's no smoke, there's no fire, Smell it, it? It's all good. 